What's up, everybody? It's episode five of the Empire Podcast. I'm here with my co-host this time, Anthony Martin. He didn't have to miss this one, so he <laughs> graced us with his presence this yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But today's topic that we're going to talk about, and what we've heard, you know, a lot of youngsters kind of ask us about being so young and in business, um, is the difference between formal and informal education. So that's like going to high school, college, should I go to college, should I not, what should I do with my life? So go ahead and give us your take on it, Anthony, and kind of let us know where you're sitting on that spectrum. Well, I mean, I'm not against formal education by any means at all. Mm -hmm. I just feel like it just depends on what you're doing. So if you want to be an electrician or if you want to be something of that nature, you don't really have to go to college and do stuff like that. You can, it might help, but you can always go to trade school and you can do mm -hmm. stuff like that too. Or I mean, for me, I just felt like with me wanting to be an entrepreneur, I didn't understand why I was in college, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Because I feel like I learned a lot more by experience and doing stuff. So like I said, I'm not against formal education, it just depends on what you want to do. Because mm -hmm. if you're my doctor, bro, you better have went to school. <laughs> <laughs> you, better like, you better have got your freaking degree. If I need you to be my lawyer, you better have went to law school, bro. Because yeah. I don't need that. So I think it kind of just depends on what you're trying to do. And I mean, you learn a lot through formal education, too. And I feel like you learn a lot about yourself, kind of going through that whole process and everything. But if you're talking, like, specific education as to what you're trying to do, I think you need to know what you want to do first and then kind of go from there. But do you think people in business or people who are trying to be entrepreneurs, do you think that they should necessarily go to school? Like they necessarily need it or? I mean, you don't need it, mm -hmm. but I think the experience helps. So you can go to college and you'll meet so many people rather than just not going and you're just kind of working and like you meet people through work, like yeah, cool, whatever. Mm -hmm. But like going to, and like the campus right here, you can say, you can go to UTSA, meet people from all over Texas, and depending on what you're trying to do, you might have found a new business partner. Mm -hmm. Or you might have found someone who can kind of help further you along. Or if you rush a frat or a sorority, stuff like that, you can meet all those people and kind of expand your sphere of influence. And then you can kind of get closer to what you're trying to do. Mm -hmm. Or if you're trying to work for an accounting firm or a law firm or a bank, stuff like that, it just be some dude sitting next to you in class. like. Oh yeah, bro, I'm trying to get my degree. I'm going to go work for my dad's law firm after this. It's like, where does your dad work at? Then you can kind of build that rapport and mm -hmm. then kind of get your foot in the door to go do something else like that. So the mean, network. Yeah, no. So I think that's, me personally, that's kind of what I used it for, is to kind of like expand my network and mm -hmm. meet more people. But again, I think it just kind of depends on what you're trying to do, mm -hmm. you know? I agree with that. It can be situational at times. Mm -hmm. Like you said, you want to be my doctor. I really hope you haven't got your degree. Man, please. <laughs> and I really hope, you know, and this, hey, look, these get degrees, but if you're my doctor, I really hope you were like A, B student. 4.0. You, know I mean? you know what I mean? Please. So, but at the end of the day, I do feel that it's also situational too. Um, for a lot of business people and entrepreneurs, I think the only reason that they should go to school is to make the connections, mm -hmm. right? And I think you need to make the connections in the business school, mm -hmm. you know? Because um, that's just kind of how I was, too. I went to college. I went to Oklahoma Wesleyan, so shout out them. Shout out David Hart, because he's actually the professor I'm going to talk about. Um, I saw him in class. He was investing in stocks and lost $500,000 and didn't even sweat, like didn't even care. Just continued teaching? Yeah, he was like, ah, oh, man. Click off, boom, okay, cool. Right back to the lesson. Nah. So to see something like that and to meet him and to talk to him and be able to ask him questions, mm -hmm. it was mind-blowing. It was life-changing, right? And learning that the guy, he bought a hotel with his grandfather's name when he was 16, put money into it, sold it when he was 18 for $2 million, to then go to school and start a real estate firm. He actually owned one of the largest Century 21 uh, brokerages in Arizona. So he, and he owned it at the age of 1920. Damn. So I mean, like he knew what he was doing. Mm -hmm. So to be able to meet somebody of that stature 
and ask him questions and talk to him personally and ask him questions after class and seeing, you know, the money he was putting into investments and real estate, right? So I think it's really situational, but I do think for business people, entrepreneurs, if you're going to school, you need to go and know in your mind you want to make connections, you know? For me, I'll just be blatantly honest, for me, I didn't want to go to college. I was like, man, fuck school. Man. Feel that. You know? Because yeah. I already felt in high school I was learning a bunch of shit that I didn't need. Mm -hmm. You know? Like, what do I need to know history for? History repeats itself. Okay, that's the only lesson I need. Cool. <laughs> you know, if you don't learn from me, it repeats. Okay. So I felt in high school that I wasn't getting what I needed out of school anyway. So I didn't want to go to college. So I told myself, it's either... It's either I'm getting a scholarship to go play basketball, I'll go play basketball overseas professionally, or I'm going to the military, because I don't want to go to school. And I don't want to pay for that shit either. Yeah. You know, for something I don't feel that I need. Yeah, because so, it would feel like a waste of money and time, I guess. Right, a, a ton of wasted time. I mean, I'm yeah. going to school for four years to get a piece of paper, you know? Mm -hmm. So for me, that's how I looked at it. You know, I don't feel everyone should look at it that way, because I do think some people need the formal education to get to where they want to go in life, yeah, I guess I, I should say. Um, but my opinion is the formal education, if you're looking to be a millionaire, a billionaire, a successful business person, successful entrepreneur, I don't think you generally need the formal education, especially since the formal education doesn't teach you what you need to know. Mm -hmm. You know, when's the last time you heard of a high schooler talking about their financials class or their debt to income class mm -hmm. or their their debt prevention class. Never. Yeah, you don't. You know, not even in your economics high school class do you learn about debt to income ratios and different way to leverage debt and bad debt, good credit, bad credit. They just tell you what the economic system is. Mm -hmm. They tell you you need to make money to spend money, then you need to spend money to make more money. Mm -hmm. But that's kind of it. You know, there's a ton of different leverages you can use, you know, different assets, there's accounting, there's bookkeeping, there's all this other stuff that goes involved with being a successful entrepreneur, they just don't teach. Yeah, well, because I, sometimes I think about it too and I feel like it's partially because they don't really want us to be, or they don't want a majority of the people to be entrepreneurs, because you need workers too. I mean, that's true. You know what I mean? So like, that's what they teach in school. Like, they just teach you to follow directions, like, okay, you're good at following directions, mm -hmm. dang, you'll be a good worker here. You'll be yeah. a good worker at Microsoft. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And mm -hmm. like, again, like we've said on every episode of the podcast, being a worker is not bad. Working a nine to five is not bad. Mm -hmm. Like it's not, being an entrepreneur, you don't always have to be an entrepreneur. But at the same time, like if that's what you want to be, you also have to understand too, you need to teach yourself a lot of stuff. And then mm -hmm. you need to get that type of informal education. So go on YouTube. There's a YouTube video for everything. Yeah. It might not explain it the way that you want, but that's why you watch six YouTube videos. <laughs> and then you'll eventually get the gist of it, and then you'll understand it a little bit more. And then, of course, doing research on your own time, because this thing right here, this is crazy. A computer in your pocket is insane. <laughs> you can literally learn anything you ever want in two seconds. You just search it up. YouTube videos will pop up. Wiki hows, like people who've done it before so it's very interesting to see that a lot of people say that they want to get to a certain place but they don't utilize the resource that they have so like that is I feel like the phone is the most important resource you could ever use if you want to be an entrepreneur or anything at all if you ever want to learn something and I tell my sisters this all the time they'll ask me a question I'm like I don't know and then they'll just kind of sit there and stare at me I'm like bro why are you looking at me well you don't know no. Do you know? No. I'm like, well, search it up. Like, <laughs> yeah. just you're on your phone all the time. You don't have yeah. to be on TikTok twenty four seven. Mm -hmm. You just swipe over to Safari and you search it up, and then boom, you know what you need to know. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? So, personally, I think that informal education is way more important because then it teaches like your accounting, your debt to income ratio, mm -hmm. stuff like that, like stuff that people don't teach us because people aren't teaching us how to buy houses at eighteen. Mm -hmm. People aren't teaching us how to build your credit at 18. No. Like, they're just not. And so they kind of just thrust you out, like, once you kind of get that high school diploma. Like, all right, cool, you're an adult now. Do adult stuff. 
Mm-hmm. And it's kind of like, well, how, how, yeah. like, how, how do I even, <laughs> yeah, how do I navigate? What is this? Like, I don't understand. <laughs> and so, there's a lot of stuff that I'm, I'm even still learning right now at 25, and I know stuff that I'll still be learning at 50, 55, 60, mm-hmm. because I just feel like learning and education should never stop. Mm-hmm. If it does, there's a problem. Yeah. Like, no one's going to know everything. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And so you kind of have to take it into your own hands to start educating yourself and learning. So whether that's reading books, YouTube videos. So my dad had me read Rich Dad, Poor Dad at like 14, I think. Mm-hmm. Didn't book. understand what the hell was. I, <laughs> no, it went over my head a, for sure. Yeah, it's a good book. No idea. And then I read it again, I think at like 18. And I was like, okay, I understand a little bit more. Then I read it a couple years ago. I was like, damn. Mm-hmm. This makes a lot of sense now. Yeah. And so, like you had said, too, previously, like, you get something different from it every time. Yeah. And so, In yeah. your different stages. Mm-hmm. Because that's one thing I want everybody to know is you go through different seasons of your life, just like the seasons of the year. Mm-hmm. You know, you go through different time periods and different things, and you have different ambitions at different ages, right? Because I know the me right now at 25, like, the me at 22 would be super proud of the me now. You know, and I was just two and a half years ago. Yeah. Two and a half years ago, me would be super proud of where I'm at right now. And I'm not even where, you know, I know 40 year old me will be. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, you keep expanding and keep learning. That's always the main goal is to keep growing and go through those seasons and learn different things, go down different avenues, reach different goals, new heights. And I think kind of to piggyback on what you said that the formal education will never allow you to do that. Mm-hmm. I think it's built in a certain way and I'm saying this because I, I had a mom who was a teacher for 13 years who she really and not officially but unofficially rewrote the entire curriculum for what kids were learning right I mean over 13 years of time she made she created these board games she created different games for her kids to actually do she made new different programs for her kids to kind of learn different avenues of things in, mm-hmm. creating new math problems, creating new math books, that kind of stuff. You know, so seeing that she had to work so hard to get them to even understand, I'm teaching my kids what they need to know in the world world, was just mind-boggling to me in the sense that everyone else who's an adult knows that their kids need to learn this shit. Mm-hmm. And yet they still don't want to implement those things into a formal education. It just it just dumbfounds me. But then it goes back to what you were saying. The education system is built for employees. Mm-hmm. It's built to have something as an employee. It's built to have somebody, you know, just kind of clock in 9 o'clock, clock out 5 p.m., go home, watch your Netflix, watch your favorite shows, eat your dinner, your microwave meal, right? Maybe you come home and, and your wife or your husband cooked for you, which would be awesome. Okay, cool, now we go out Friday, Saturday, Sunday, you know, hang time with the family, then we're right back at 9 a.m. Monday. And that's kind of what the education system builds and builds your mind around. So I think, right to piggyback on your point again, I think it's built for employees and that's where they want a lot of people to go. And a lot of people don't know, and this is just a history fact, but the actual school system, like the school curriculum, was created because they had a shortage of warehouse and, and miners, like way, way back. Mm-hmm. So they created the school system, and it actually was created to build the employee, to build the perfect employee. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people don't understand that. They're like, oh no, I gotta go to school, I gotta go to school, I gotta go to school, I gotta go to school. Cool, if that's what you wanna do with your life, cool. But like I've said to everyone I know and anyone I'll ever meet, if you want to be a millionaire, if you want to be a billionaire, if you want to be top 1%, top 5%, shit, even top 10%, you can't just rely on that formal education. Yeah. You just can't, you know. And, hey, I get going through high school, graduating high school, that was a major thing for me. Probably one of the happiest days of my life was when I got my fucking high school diploma. Like, I was the first male in my family, in my bloodline, to ever graduate high school and then actually go and get accepted to college too. Mm-hmm. You know, first male ever, happiest day of my life. So I would have not getting your high school education, getting your diploma, but anything after that and relying on those systems in place to build your life around is just not very cohesive. Yeah. You know, it's not, it's not really gonna 
mend well together. But that's just my opinion, though. Well, I think informal education is also knowing yourself, too. So, yeah, I guess he's out I also, I watched, and I hate saying this, I watched a TikTok the other day because I re downloaded it. I'm going to delete it after this. <laughs> but the one that I had watched, it was a podcast of teachers. And so, one of the guys, he was explaining how he had a student, I think it was, he was a senior. Mm -hmm. So, he was 17 years old. He said he wasn't going to pass. Like, he failed everything. He was in class. He was sleeping. Mm -hmm. He just wasn't. He wasn't trying to be there, basically. But he said he would always see him drawing, and he said that he had the craziest drawings, that they were so good. So one day he said that he walked up and he asked him, he's like, hey, bro, why are you here? Like, And when I heard that, I was like, damn. If a teacher came up like, why are you here? I'd be kind of sick. That's a, yeah. Like, why am I here? Like, I don't know. But his response was, because I have to be. Mm -hmm. And he was like, dude, like, he was like, well, what do you want to do? He's like, oh, I want to be a tattoo artist. And since he was 17, he could go do that. So he was like, bro, just, just go do that. And so he said that he met him two years later and that he thanked his teacher because he was like, man, like, no one's ever told me that I can just go do that. And like, mm -hmm. I never knew, like, I never understood that I can just go and do what I wanted to do. He's like, I'm the happiest I've ever been, blah, blah, blah. And then, of course, like, he can go back at his GED and then he can mm -hmm. go do other things too. Yeah. And so just having that person to explain to him, like, hey, this option is also available too. Like you can also do this. Yeah. Was mind blowing to the kid because he didn't know. Like he had <laughs> no idea. And so, I mean, kind of the way he went about it was kind of like, yeah, bro, you don't have to be here. Like you're good. Yeah. You're good, bro. But <laughs> the fact that it worked out for him is kind of that just goes to show like having that kind of awareness for yourself or mm -hmm. like a type of education about yourself, which I guess I would consider informal education to know that like damn I'm kind of wasting my time here. What do I feel like I need to do or what do I want to do? And let me just go off and let me just do that. You yeah. know what I mean? And so I just thought it was an interesting take. It was just a really interesting video because that goes back to what we were talking about, about high school, that they don't teach us the stuff that we want to know mm -hmm. or the stuff that we feel like we need to know. We just got to do it. Yeah, you just got to go out there and do it. Yeah. And, and just so that one conversation with that teacher and the student changed the whole trajectory of his life that he didn't even... He couldn't even comprehend. He just thought he was going to school that day. He's like, but another day to sleep. Mm -hmm. Like, just trying to chill. Mm -hmm. And he went, hey, you should be a tattoo artist. Boom. Now he could be the greatest tattoo artist of all time. Yeah. Just from that one conversation. I'm like, shout out, uh, hashtag all the teachers. Nah, yeah. This conversation. No. Man. You just never know how one question could change somebody's life. No, Do you really want to change a kid's life? Ask them questions. That's what my mom was really good at mm -hmm. for her kids. Like, she would always... You're like, hey, like, why are you tired? Like, hey, what's wrong? Like, hey, why are you sad? Why are you failing? You know, why are you, why is this going on? Mm -hmm. And she would always push to, you know, um, like AOC kids and the 401 kids, you know, the, the special needs kids who need different things, whether that be ADHD or, you know, somebody is just really not comprehending math the right way. Mm -hmm. She was really big on pushing for those students to get the learning they need. Because nowadays, I mean, they just pass fucking anybody, mm -hmm. you know? And it, just, it really, to me, honestly, and it's nothing on any teachers, but the school system is a joke. Oh, absolutely. Like, it's a huge joke. Now, it was a joke when I was in school, but, I mean, now even, it's even more of a joke. Well, because my aunt's a teacher, know? too, so she tells me all the time about the school system mm -hmm. because she's a college prep coach, basically. Mm -hmm. And so she preps high school kids to go to college. Mm -hmm. And so... She just says sometimes some of the kids just aren't ready. Yeah. And it's not because of what she's doing or the kids. It's what the curriculum and what the school system has done up to that point. So from grades 8 to 11, they didn't really teach them nothing. So now they're grade 12, about to go to college, but you don't know how to do algebra. Yeah, and they don't know. So it's like, yeah. I can't teach you all this stuff in the span of a year, and then you have to get ready to graduate. Mm -hmm. Then you have extracurriculars. And then you're also trying to find a way to get into college, too. Yeah. So there's just so much going on. And so. And let's not even talk about, like, the emotional shit you're going through. Oh, right? yeah, bro. Like, like, high school. The girls, the guys, yeah. like, the footballs, the fucking, all the drama. Prom, homecoming, you, yeah. all the extra shit, yeah. So I just think, I think personally that the whole school system is a joke because of the way it's been laid out mm. over years and years and years. And over time, it's just like, dude, there's no reason, no reason to go to school. So it's just one of those things. 
like you said, you know, formal education is really good for a lot of careers and a lot of people, you know, moving on past that. However, you have to understand what career you're looking at and then kind of what you're basing your formal education on. Are you just getting it for a piece of paper like I was? Because I'll be straight up. I was just getting it for the diploma. <laughs> just to hang it on my fucking wall and say, yeah, I fucking did that. You know? It was a pride thing. It was more of a, yeah, I fucking did that. Like, I fucking did it. Now what? Nah, I told my mom, I was like, yeah, once I get my diploma, I'm just going to give it to you. You can frame it, do throw it in a <laughs> box. I don't care what you do with it, but it's yours. Well, no, you work for that. Sure. Like, sure. <laughs> sure. Yeah, you got it. But whenever, because I think, I got my associates, too. And so they sent me, like, a little diploma in the mail. Mm -hmm. And so I got it. And I didn't even know what it was. It was just, like, a fucking envelope on the table with my name on it. Mm -hmm. So I went, got home, opened it. I was like, oh, shit, that's cool. Put it back, put it there. Went to go keep doing the shit I was doing. Yeah. And then uh, my parents and my grandparents were like, oh, what is this? Like, what is it? I'm like, oh, it's my associate's degree. They're like, what? <laughs> <laughs> you got your associate's? I'm like, yeah. I'm like, oh, that's so good. Like, like, aren't you so excited? Aren't you so proud? I'm like, I guess, like, <laughs> I'm not really because I know I wasn't getting it for me. Mm -hmm. It was more for them. And yeah. so when I realized it was more for them, I was kind of like, okay. So I, I, eh, I already didn't want to be here. And then I'm getting it for you. And then it's not really going to provide me anything for what I want to do. Mm -hmm. What the fuck am I doing? Like, <laughs> why, why am I doing this? Yeah. And so I feel like I found, and of course success is relative, but I found more success doing things and experiencing things. Because, mm -hmm. of course, knowing what you don't want to do is a lot better than like, oh, I don't know what I want to do. Like, well... You know you don't want to pick up trash for the rest of your life. Okay, yeah. cool. Had that job. Don't want to do that. Don't want to do that okay. shit. Yeah. I was a personal trainer. Wasn't really my cup of tea. Okay, cool. I know I don't want to do that. But now I'm not in my 40s thinking like, dang, should I go get my personal trainer certification? Mm -hmm. Nah, I did that shit at 20, bro. I don't want to do that. Yeah. And so, like, it kind of narrows the path down for you a little bit to kind of, like, give you that light at the end of the tunnel of, like, what you want to do. Then if I want to go back and then go to school and get my law degree and do all that stuff, I at least have experienced all these things to lead me back to there, to know that that's actually what I want to do. Mm -hmm. And I'll be doing it for me rather than doing it for someone else or doing it for my family. Because mm -hmm. I feel like that's a really big thing now. It's like family weighs a lot on the decisions of the child. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to say like that shouldn't happen because I know your family only wants the best for you. But at the same time, you yourself know what's best for yourself. Mm -hmm. So if you want to go to school and your family wants you to be a doctor, but you know that you really want to go for computer science, let's go for computer science. Or if you want to go for art, or if you want to go for journalism, that's what you need to do because you don't want to live life according to someone else and then, God forbid, something happens to your family. And then now you're by yourself with a degree that you don't even use that you don't want to do. And you're just like, well, shit, I should have just got my journalism degree. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, you should have because it's your life and you're living it. So no one else is going to know how you feel. So that's why I just feel like it's important. And then that goes back to the informal education of knowing yourself. So if you know, like, damn, I'm good at school, but being a doctor just ain't it for me. Mm -hmm. All right, bro, just don't do it then. What do you like to do? I like to do this. Go do that. Go 100% all in, do it. <laughs> Straight balls to the wall. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, yeah, your parents might be pissed, but at least you'll be happy the other 364 days out of the year. Mm -hmm. And then whenever you come home for Thanksgiving, they might bitch and complain for an hour or two. And then after that, you're good. You don't have to deal with that shit anymore, you know? Mm -hmm. I think to kind of go off that same token, I think that a lot of people hear people say a bunch of different shit, mm -hmm. you know? But one thing that has always stuck with me is always find your passion and then build whatever you want to do off of your passion. Right, and I'm not, and it's not like a hobby, you know. A hobby is painting boats, making toy cars, whatever. That's a hobby. It's not a passion. But what are you passionate about, you know? And you need to find that, and then build whatever you want out of your life off of that, mm -hmm. off of that one thing, right? Off of that one passion that you have. So, I think a lot of people don't understand that concept either, mm -hmm. right? And it's something Gary Vee says all the time, right? Because people may think, oh, I need to make. $100,000 so that I can live the way that I want to live. 
okay, that might be true, but are you happy doing that? Mm -hmm. Are you happy make, working enough to make the 100000 to then go and live the life that you think you want to live? Is that making you happy? Because some people, I'll just be honest, some people are happy living in a goddamn cardboard box. Like, they don't give a fuck. Mm -hmm. You know, all the van lifers, they live in a fucking van traveling all the damn time. They have the remote jobs and they do whatever they want. Happiest people I've yeah. ever seen. Happy, happiest people in the fucking world. Now, me? No, I so, can't do it. Nah. Can't do it. But there are people out there who do those types of things and they have those types of scenarios where they, their life allows that and that's what they want. Mm -hmm. So I think you have to really understand what your passion is and then just build off of that because I know nine to five people who hate their fucking job, who hate their life, who go home and they don't do anything, they get drunk all the time, they don't want to do anything with their life, they're, they just feel like they're stuck in a rut. Mm -hmm. But I know people who live in a goddamn van <laughs> and they're happy as shit all the time. Like yeah. they, do, they don't care. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's not just about being successful and what success means to you, because that does, I feel, bring in a little bit. But success for me, right, I want a huge mansion, I want seven different cars, I want Rolls Royces, I want G-Wagons, you know, I want a private jet, and I want all these things, you know. That's not me being materialistic, and that's not me saying successful is having all of that. For me, being successful is having myself and my family feel super comfortable where we're at, while also going out to help other people attain what they want, mm -hmm. right? That's being successful for me. It's not having the mansion and the cars and shit. That's I just, just a want, byproduct. Yeah, that's just a byproduct of what I feel success is and what my passion is, mm -hmm. right? And I know that for me to help as many people as I want, to change the world the way I want to, I have to be in a certain position, either whether that be economically, socially, politically, I have to be in a certain position to then come back and do that. You know, I couldn't have explained it any better. So that's where I'm going to be happy. Mm -hmm. My passion is serving people and really empowering people through real estate. Like that's my passion. I love houses. I love real estate. I love design. And I love helping people. Mm -hmm. It just all comes together in this real estate. Boom, easy. Okay, cool. This is my passion. It's where I'm building my career on. And now I'm building a career. I always told myself I wanted to be a real estate agent, but now I understand all the power that I hold as being a real estate agent because I'm literally sitting here like this with the world in my hand right now. You know what I mean? And it's a crazy feeling to know that this is my passion, this is what I want to do. And now I can get to where I want to go while doing that? Mm -hmm. Easy. Yeah. So, but let's just take my sibling, for example, my younger sibling. They don't like real estate at all. They could care less. They don't even want to talk to people really. But they're hella good at design and editing and video making and all the little claymations and mm -hmm. stuff. They do all that. They make the claymations and they make the videos and they're super good at editing. Like they can edit all different types of shit together, photoshopping, all this shit. They're amazing at it. Mm -hmm. That's their passion. That's what they want to do. So they're building a career off what they want to do, not what I want to do. They could care less about a house. I walk in a house. I walk in every house. I'm like, damn, I love this house. <laughs> like, I love this, 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 this. You put them in a the house, and they're like, okay, it's, it's a house. It's a house. It's drywall. It's got some stairs. I mean, nothing special, you know. Mm -hmm. So I think finding that passion is really what is going to drive you, us, anyone in the world to really become happy and ha have that successful life that you want to live. Yeah. And. For me, I think the inform or the formal education just doesn't give that. It doesn't give anybody creative spirit. You know, mm -hmm. art class is okay. You know, yeah, it brings out the creative mind for artists, but you still have assignments. <laughs> you can only artists. you can only draw certain things. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? And there's very few people who are good at art. Let's be real. There's very few I'm people who have that artistic mind. Like that's very special. I feel to have because a lot of people don't have that. Mm -hmm. Tell me to draw a face, I'm gonna draw a stick figure. All day. Don't ask me to draw All nothing. Day. Don't ask me to draw anything. When my art teachers say, hey, can you draw this? Do you got a stencil? No. Sorry, can't bro. do it. Yeah. I can't do it. I can do some abstract stuff, but I mean, other than that, you know? Yeah. Um, but that's what I think. I think about formal education is it doesn't allow you to be happy. It doesn't allow you to find that happy place. So I think people need to find that happy place. So all you out there asking, I think you need to find your happy place. Find that happy place and then just go there. Yeah. Go with it. I feel like make your decision after you find the place. 
Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So like, because if you're miserable going to school every day, why the hell are you there? Mm-hmm. But if that's your happiest place and you love going to see your friends and then you love sitting in class because you love what you're learning, then that's where you need to be. So, but that's not, your art class won't teach you that. Your mm-hmm. history class won't teach you that. Only you will know. So that goes yeah. back to what we said. Like, you just have to know yourself. And once you do that, it'll all fall into place. Because it all eventually does. Mm-hmm. But yeah, well, man. Even on that token, I feel, for me, I was super happy to go to school. But it's because I really love meeting and talking to people. Mm-hmm. You know, and you can sit me in a room full of 100 people. In an hour, I'll know 50 of them. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I will have talked to at least 75 and I'll know 50 of them by name. You know what I mean? And that's just because that's what I love to do. I love to talk to people. I love to ask questions, learn people's stories, you know, and I guess that's the real estate agent in me, you know, too. Mm -hmm. You know, my first question is always, you have a house? (laughs) You know what I mean? But, But really, though, I just like meeting people and talking to people. So we can also go off of that, too. If you... If you love going to school, but you don't love the education, you're a people person. Mm -hmm. You're a people person. You need to be a speaker. You need to be a politician. You need to be, you know, a marketing around people. Yeah, you need to be doing something. If you go to school and you just go into school to really just be there to go through the motions, you don't like talking to people. You're you have a creative mindset. You have artistic mindset. That means that you're very reserved. So you feel you need to be behind the screen or you need to buy, be behind the scenes, mm-hmm. right? That's, that's your work, that's where you go. That's, those are the directors, those are the, the makeup artists, those are the producers, right? Those are the music producers. They don't meet a lot of people because they don't need to, mm-hmm. right? That's not what they want. And then you have people who go to school, who are super good at school, who love going to school, who love learning, like you said. Okay, cool, well, those are gonna be those doctors those are going to be the lawyers. Those are going to be the super successful educational speakers, right? Those are going to be the super successful professors, mm-hmm. right? That's your passion, right? So you need to analyze what you like or what your passion is, and then you need to make your decision, like you said, based off that. Because if I wouldn't have analyzed what my passion was, and I did it at a very young age, I'll say, I knew at 14 I was going to be a real estate agent. Mm-hmm. Like, I knew. I just knew at 14. Like, I just knew it. Damn. But if you don't know that and you're 18, 19, 20, it's cool. Figure it out. Like, it's fine. Mm-hmm. I think before real estate, I, real, being a real estate agent is the longest job I've ever had, mind you, right? And, that, and it's only been like two years. Mm-hmm. But I think before this, I, I counted, I had 35 different jobs. Jesus Christ. Dude, I did so much, so many different things. And I was Damn. blessed to have a mom that supported me and all that. She really didn't. She didn't tell me, oh, you shouldn't work there. You shouldn't do this. You shouldn't do that. She really was just like, all right, if that's what you want to do, do it. You know, I was blessed to have that. Yeah. But at the same time, you know, I had 35 different fucking jobs. Yeah. Like, if I was to put all that on a resume, it'd be 10 sheets long. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And I had jobs for two or three months. And I was like, ah, I don't like it. Yeah, this ain't it. All right, I'm out. You know, no, nah, nah. yeah. not my thing. You know, not my cup of tea. And all that stuff kind of happens, too. So you just have to know what that passion is and know where you thrive. Yeah. You know? But if you want to go ahead and say anything else to them, let them know one more golden nugget, one more thing that they could pick up on and use. Man, just reiterate what I say, because I do this every episode. <laughs> every time. <laughs> Please just listen to what we're saying. <laughs> and if it doesn't resonate with you, it just doesn't. Like... <laughs> I'm going to be honest. Like I've been saying, you just need to know yourself. And once you kind of figure that out, and that's going to be a tough thing to do because Mm -hmm. it's not easy. You don't just wake up. Or you might think you know yourself, but you don't really. Mm -hmm. And there's some conversations that you might need to have with yourself as to, like, what direction you're trying to go or what you're trying to do. Because even if us at 25, us at 28, us at 19, we still might not know what we're doing. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And if you kind of want to find a way to get that direction, you just need to have that honest conversation with yourself as to like, okay, what do I want to do? Or what do I want my life to look like? And kind of just go from there. And like you said, if you're okay with making that thirty six, forty eight thousand dollars $48,000 a year, and you're chilling, and you're the happiest you've ever been, bro, go do that shit. Like, <laughs> be the happiest you've ever been, because that's what life is about. Like, you don't want to go through life 
sad and upset and paying bills all the time. Like, if you're the happiest you've ever been, that's what you need to focus on. That's where you need to be. So if that's you making $35,000 a year, if that's you making $8.2 billion a year, that's just what you need to do. Whatever that is, that's kind of where you need to go. But that starts with the informal type of education in yourself and then kind of piggybacking off that to learn things on your own. Mm -hmm. So that's all I got. That's all I got to say. So I just want to leave everybody with the one thought of finding your passion and building off of that because I feel that's super important and it's something very neglected in a lot of people's lives. So kind of what he said, go within yourself, sit with yourself, learn yourself, ask yourself questions, reflect, reflect with yourself, with the person in the mirror and just ask yourself, you know, what is my passion? What do I love to do? And really think about it. You know, really think about that shit. Mm -hmm. I saw it at a very, very young age and I knew that I wanted to help people because of what my mother had to go through and you know what I saw people in our neighborhood go through and things I knew about other people right that I didn't know I would hear stories and I knew I wanted to help people and now I'm just building everything on top of helping people in the way that I want to and I mean that's what I love doing I love helping people so that was my passion so just sit there really think about your passion and really where you want to go with your passion and then make your decisions off of that that's what i would say and that's kind of what i want to leave it on and leave you guys with um, if you didn't take anything from this take that take take something right go back and re-listen to it and listen to it again and try and take something out of it um, but other than that we out it's episode five shit we're halfway through season one damn hey it's crazy hey I will say we got some heat coming next week. <laughs> we got something yeah, we, crazy. So y'all stay make sure, tuned. Make sure you subscribe and turn your notifications on because the one next week, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, you don't want to miss it. If you're an entrepreneur or not, you don't want to miss it. If you're a female entrepreneur, you, you for sure, sure don't, don't want to miss one. it. Um, and you really want to be successful in what you're doing, whatever it is. You know, I don't, I can't even give you the guest name yet. But just know, like, she's coming in and it's going to be some heat flying around in this freaking room. And it's going to be dope. And it's going to be really, really good to hear her side of everything and what she's done. Mm -hmm. You know, she was in the military, real estate agent, loan officer, branch manager. She's done a ton of shit in her time here, you know, and I think she's not even 40. Not even 40 Dang. yet, I don't think. I, I think, didn't know that. Yeah, she's young. So... Yeah. Like I said, subscribe, turn the notifications on. Make sure you're here for that one because if you if you don't listen to any of the other ones, I don't really care, but I want everybody to see that one for sure. Nah, yeah, y'all got to tune in for that one. So, so, so without that, we out. Peace out.